You should ask yourself this question. I would, especially when there's political power, men are in charge. You know, we always have to be in charge. You know how that goes. This whole notion of burning Quranic manuscripts, these variants, the third caliph. So Dr. Shadi Nasir joins me today to discuss the burning of this literature. Why were they running around burning it? it? Sounds like early church fathers. And I keep relating back to my knowledge of biblical studies and church history. They were burning manuscripts that didn't line up with orthodoxy. Doesn't mean it was wrong. But according to the Orthodox Church, it sure as was, and it could have sent you to hell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join Myth Vision's Patreon not only to support us, but there are 72 videos that I did with Dr. Dennis R. McDonald and Richard Carrier, all on the Patreon, early access. You guys can ask personal questions when I go to interview these scholars and you're helping Myth Vision grow. Wasn't there burning of some of these manuscripts? Right. Yes, so when, you know, the third caliph of man, according to the the narrative, the tradition, right? So uh, when they collected the so there was the first collection and then according to the to this narrative that there was a second collection because people muslims were reciting the quran differently so that's again probably the beginning of the variant readings and it seems that there these variant readings were not issues of pronunciation or vowels otherwise they would have put the vowels they didn't have the vowels but it seems that people were reciting differently uh, syntactically, not just, you know, uh, a variant word here and there. And this is what caused the second collection. So what Othman did is that he formed a committee. Um, and there are also problems with this tradition we can talk about, of this narrative, but he formed a committee. Um, they created the a copy, which is the main codex. And then they made copies of that codex. And the copies differ. There are many traditions where they four, five, six, seven. So there's either between four and 11. And they sent it to different cities, to Iraq, to, uh, you know, Bahrain, etc. cetera. Um, and what he did is that the existing uh, codices that the companions of Muhammad possessed, that he forced them from their holders, and then he burned them. Okay, or in other tradition, he, you know, uh, he was he he tore them apart, uh, but he burned them, and then so that uh, there were only one version would survive. Okay, which is the version that we have right now. So, this, despite this fact, we do have uh, there are you know a companion Ibn Masoud who refused to uh, give his own codex, his own copy, uh, to burn it, and then he kept it. And we do know that even 100 years later, or probably even more, in, in Iraq, uh, that they were still reciting using this codex or this version of Ibn Masoud. And then it slowly died down, you know, after second century, it's like 8th century, mid, mid, you know, probably after the 800s, it started to die down. But many of the particulars of these readings were recorded in sources. And, and how, I think how around the 800s is when there's like this scientific revolution, actually. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. like this really interesting, um, you know, where, where Islam was on top of the world when it came to scientific uh, studies. And they were looking, from what I understand, to Greek sources. I don't want to rabbit trail there, but like they knew, I think, from the conquering of Byzantine and whatnot, mm -hmm. they had all these Greek uh, ancient yes, science books yes. and really, really did some deep knowledge on this. So, of course, I mean, uh, yeah, they uh, again, they were not uh, isolated even before Islam and after Islam, they were not isolated from what was happening, you know, around them. And even as early as, you know, the Umayyads who came to power after the uh, the fourth caliph, uh, they were hiring people, you know, as scribes from Byzantium, you know, who were bilingual, also from the Persian Empire who fell, you know, afterwards. Uh, they were hiring these people to run the state. Huh. Okay. Interesting. So, That's clever, clever. 
Yeah, and this is the kind of continuity and how, you know, the different traditions from Byzantium and from uh, from Persia, they were all uh, in a melting pot, in a, you know, in a sense, alongside, you know, the Bedouinized, if you want, Arabic, uh, you know, culture coming from uh, from Arabia. Um, and it is the reason why you move the capital to the north, right? So there's virtually, you have desert, right, in Arabia. So if you want to create an empire, you move north. You don't right. start from Mecca. And this is why, you know, the fourth caliph, you know, he left Medina and then he went to Kufa, to, to Iraq. This is where the, the Persians were. So he didn't stay in, you know, there were, of course, there were political conflicts there, but you move up. And then his rival, who established the Umayyad dynasty, he went to Syria, where the Byzantine were. Hmm. So you start the expansions and the empire from the north. You don't start it from from the desert it's very difficult right. to do that so Ladies and gentlemen, join MythVision's Patreon, not only to support us, but there are 72 videos that I did with Dr. Dennis R. McDonald and Richard Carrier, all on the Patreon, early access. You guys can ask personal questions when I go to interview these scholars, and you're helping MythVision grow.